Well, here we are at the Mercury Theatre, the home of the Rombert Ballet School, and uh, where Rombert Company was founded by the one and only Mary Rombert. And uh, I walked through these doors here, number two, Labrick Road, for many years, from the age of 10, roughly around the same age as this young man here, Orion. And um, I started my career as a, a ballet dancer. Um, I started at 10 and I went on until I was 19 when I graduated from the Ballet Rombert School to become a professional dancer. And uh, today we've come to, to show you the talent of Portobello Dance School because now I run my own dance school here in the borough, down in Portobello, Portobello Dance School. And with Miss Rachel, we're going to do a little piece up and down those stairs and I used to walk up through those doors too every day. And um, I think uh, I'm a very proud man to have two of my talented students come back to where I was trained in front of this building, this wonderful old Mercury Theatre, to show us their talent and uh, to continue that legacy of dance in the borough. What did dance mean to you growing up? Well, I think uh, for me it was it kept me it kept me going as a very energetic young young man. Um, it it was something that I could look forward to doing every week, and uh, I knew at a very early age that I actually wanted to be a dancer. So um, I just pursued it and pursued it, and I was I was encouraged. I was very fortunate to have been brought up in a children's home, but the people that brought me up my Auntie Helen um, was very, were very encouraging and supportive and um, they thought let's channel that energy and send Mark to dance school. So it was the wrong best school where I came to at the age of 10. And what was your motivation when you started your own school? What was the thinking for you? Well it just thought it was, it was on the same lines as what was given to me. I was given the opportunity because I had so much energy and and passion for dance and I just felt that it was good for children from ethnic backgrounds like myself to have that opportunity and to be able to access affordable dance, dance that had role models that they could relate to, which I hope that I'm a good role model that they can relate to, and um, to help them to pursue careers in dance um, in, a, in a way that is a inspiring and um, professional and a realistic path to get into the, the professional dance world because it's not very easy. And I think to have people, teachers around you that tell you that you can do that and you can be a professional dancer is very important. You know, in my day, there were a lot of teachers that were not very encouraging. Um, so it wasn't very easy, but I made it. And I think it's important that young children like this are encouraged. That's wonderful. What have you got going for us today? Well, what we've got going today is uh, my wonderful teacher, Miss Rachel, has choreographed a piece up these stairs and down these stairs, where I used to walk through those doors for many years. And um, we're going to see two of my talented young dancers who not only do our play, but they also do tap, and we just thought it'd be really nice to show everybody tap, which I remember seeing a lot of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and um, all those wonderful um, tappers from Hollywood. And we've got um, we've got our our Nicholas brother, Mr. Orion. So we've got the Nicholas brother and sister, and the Nicholas brothers were very famous Hollywood tappers. So we've got two of my talented students that are going to portray the Nicholas brothers and sisters doing their tap. Orion. Okay, Orion and Dominica, who are going to sort of inspire us with their talent. And the choreography is by Rachel. And I'm going to take it over to you. Take it away, tappers. Oh. 
different person to that time what's the same and what's different in you I think I felt I felt very proud I always feel proud to return to that building I always feel drawn to go back to that building because I've always been in the area when I've needed a little bit of support mentally I seem to get drawn back to the Mercury Theatre and just think how grateful that I had the opportunity to, to be trained at such a wonderful place and how now I'm, I'm doing the same thing myself, training people in the area in, um, in classical ballet and contemporary dance. So mm. for me, it's, um, it's, it's a very special place for me to, to go and um, be grateful for what I've been given, which is a, 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 a beautiful um, training. And, 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 and I've had an incredible career. Mm. What do you feel um, that you learnt, that, that was something that you're passing on to the students? What, is, what are the nuggets that you feel that you've learnt from that place that you feel that you're passing on? Well, first of all, I think your first dance class should be embracing mm. and should be inspiring. Yeah. I think that a lot of the time, especially back in the day, it can be very off-putting and, and not very embracing. Um, I think that for me personally, as an artistic director of the Portobello Dance School, I always make sure that I teach the first class that a child has, as in we start at the age of three, the tiny tots, and I teach the tiny tot class, which I absolutely adore. And it's important that they have a very magical time with Mr. Mark, Um, even if it's not going all their way, like this morning, because we just started back to the tabernacle. Today, yay! Yippee, we started back today. So, um... I had my first tiny top class. I had six yeah. tiny tots this morning. And I had I had one tiny tot who was... How old are the tiny tots? Threes to fives. Oh, so cute. They are. They're little diamonds. Yeah. So my, my little acorns that yeah. grow into lovely oak trees, like yeah. I like to say. And basically, this little girl, she came all enthusiastic with mummy. I think she just turned three. And I said, well, you're the first tiny tot to arrive. So I think I've got some magic in my bag, which was I had bought a couple of weeks ago at car boot sale some butterfly wings <laughs> i'd bought some butterfly wings for a pound yeah at, oh, um, sweet. this car boot sale. Oh. And I said, the first tiny tot that arrives yeah. for class when we reopen on the 10th will get the butterfly wings yeah oh, lovely. so i said to her it's quite symbolic actually as well the there butterfly you go wings. there you go so she she got the butterfly wings, but when she started the class, she was a little bit tearful. Mm. And so I thought, okay, it's okay. I said, I'll tell you what, you can sit with mummy and you can watch the class. Yeah. So she sat with mummy and she watched the class. And that's the way I work, really. I yeah. think it's always good to, to let children just ease themselves in. Some children yeah. are in there straight away, yeah. you know, and can't stop them. And they're, they're Darcy Brussels or they're Billy Elliot's or they're you know, 
Alvin Ailey's, you know, they're, they're fabulous. But if there's that child that just needs a little gentleness yeah. to ease them in, then I'm there for that. Yeah. Some people just haven't got the patience for it, but mm. that's the, the difference between, I think, how I teach at the Portobello Dance School and other dance schools. Yeah. I think that it is about making sure that that first class is utterly magic and yeah. embracing. I thought it was really embracing as well in, in, the, in the film because there is another tot that arrived with a woman and her baby and that feel like such a community spirit there. Did you know her from before or was that? That was off the spur of the moment. That yeah. was absolutely synchronicity at its best because the, that morning I went, of course, bright and early just to check the set and everything mm. and the children, Orion and his, his cousin, to make sure that they were comfortable doing the routine up and down the steps. And I'd already been to the house and spoken to Angela Ellis's son, who now lives in the so actual Angela building. Angela Ellis is the... Angela Ellis was my teacher. Okay. She school. was the daughter of Mary Rombert. Okay. And now her son looks, has taken over the house. Not the school. The school was bought by a, pri a private investor. Okay. He also gave me permission to do what we needed to do because yeah. we needed to film, of course the main building yes. and of course Angela Ellis's house which was part of the building it's just i found it so interesting because it's just such a part of the community you could really feel the community spirit yes and so for you the school when you founded it when you started the school what was your vision for it what was what you vision for my you, school for your school what did you want it to accomplish in terms of I giving different you know parts of the community access to i wanted dance? it to be a school where it was totally about inclusion, not yeah. exclusion. It was totally about diversity. And it was also about um, making sure that children from ethnic minorities and diverse backgrounds were able to enter an environment where they felt comfortable, embraced, and they, and they could look at a teacher and think, oh, I want to be like him or I want to be like her. They, they could relate to a visual image, yeah. which is so important because a lot of the yeah. ballet schools that tend, tend to are children from backgrounds are, are ca Caucasian. So for a, a, a child of colour who taught a Caucasian teacher is is not so in, empowering as maybe a little, a little black girl seeing a, a teacher of the same colour yes. um, being that gorgeous yeah. Yeah. ballerina. Yeah. And basically... That's what it's about. It's about being able to come into a space and relate mm. to your environment, not only physically, but visually. Your teachers are somebody that you can actually relate to. Relate to. Is this about role models as well? Role models, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and now, like, what's happened to you during lockdown and coming out? Like, what's going on for you at the moment? Tell us, bring wow. us up to speed. <laughs> I haven't yeah. stopped really, to be honest with you. It's been very, very busy. Yeah. Thank the Lord, I'm not complaining. Um, we started off looking at how we were going to get onto the virtual Yeah, the virtual ladder. world, yeah. How does that work with dance? Well, because it's such a physical... It is, yeah. and I, I wasn't really very good at embracing the virtual because I'm very visual, I'm very sort of tactile and th very there. Yeah. And uh, of course, the, the virtual was going to be, had to be done on film, um, indoors, in, in the individual teachers, my, my teachers' um, apartments and flats and houses. So what we did, we built a program that let the children that wanted to still access dance, because for, for me it was important to be able to still give the community um, access to dance mm. um, through the Mark Eli Dance Foundation and the, and the Portobello Dance School. So all my teachers were really supportive about going virtual mm -hmm. so they all in their own individual ways my ballet teachers taught ballet classes my tap teachers taught tap classes and my street dance teachers taught street dance yeah. and I just did a little bit of tiny tots I, yeah. I taught tiny tots which was quite interesting virtually so yeah it was um an interesting period and then straight from the school going virtual we did the summer school yes. we got funded um by um, John Lyons Trust. Great. Yeah, that was great. Um, and we did a summer school, which we completely tore it to pieces. It yeah. was unbelievable. We had an incredible 
a cast of, of faculty. Um, you know, I had my, my own teachers from Portobello Dance School who are incredible. My Russian ballet teacher, Anna Davidova, and Rachel, who's an incredible, not only American style tapper, but British style tapper, West End style tap and Broadway. And then my wonderful teacher, the Street Ocean, who's just unbelievable. And then on top of that, because of the West End and my contacts in the West End, I had Leighton Williams, yeah. who had to pull out of his latest West End show. Everyone's talking about Jamie. So he was starring in that. There was another girl starring in um, Tina. Yeah, oh, cool. And it was just incredible. That's so fun. We, yeah, we had, we had a West End um, cast of incredible guest artists and then my my my, my wonderful um faculty of teachers who yeah. were second to none oh amazing yeah and, and how do you gel everyone together when you bring that to, when you've got a host of people together how do you create a gel a family spirit within the school like how do you motivate all of these different teachers coming from different backgrounds and you give them work <laughs> <laughs> keep, you them give them, keep them busy give yeah. them work because that's you know right now you know it's a very 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 sad time for the theater yeah that's what i'm talking about motivation yes. you know when you're disparate and you're fine that's when people can be quite depressed and lonely and 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 then coming together is really important but and in a physical and a, and a, a spiritual way uh, and when you're leading that how do you well, galvanize you, you just said it you know it, it, you know it's bringing people together and and that's what I've been told that I'm I'm good at one of the things that I'm I'm good at is bringing people together and um that's what I wanted to do I wanted to, yeah. to keep my my staff together I wanted to keep my team together yeah. and I wanted to to continue to deliver dance to the community so there was no problem about the teachers wanting to to work with me it was just a case of how we're we going to do it yeah. and the rest was basically history yeah. So we've we've reached that pot, that part now yeah. where we're back in the hard copy, yeah. and you know I think I said earlier we opened today back at our home, the Tabernacle. Yeah. Um, nine so o'clock this morning. Yes, I was setting up everything and um, doing good toes, naughty toes, with my tiny tots. Yeah. So are there any announcements that you want to make today? Any announcements? For live streaming. Yeah. Well, you know. Portobello Dance School is now open again. So anybody yeah. who's out there, any youngsters that want to come and do some dance to inspire, my catchphrase is dance to inspire. It's, in, it's inclusion, not exclusion. And um, yes, we've been so happy and blessed to come back today. So any children out there that want to come and do some dance, ballet, tap, street, contemporary. We do a little bit of everything. Please come and check us out at the Portobello Dance School down there, Power Square at the wonderful Tabernacle, Power Square, Special W11, yeah. 2AY, <laughs> or contact me on www.portobellodance.org.uk. So uh, the school is up and firing and now I'm up and firing yeah. on another project, which is classically British. Yeah. Here, I've got a lovely little poster. Can you see it, guys? Yeah. And classically British is a celebration, which I've been doing for the last 16 years. It sounds it's terrible like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but I'm so proud this morning. And I'm so proud and, and honoured to be here, to be able to tell you people about the achievements of your community, what your community has achieved. And my team has helped the community achieve these great, these great things. And Classically British is one of my initiatives. It's a Black History Month. I don't like to use month. I like to use event. So it's a- Timeless. It's a timeless. It's a Black History event, which I've been doing for 16 years. It throws a spotlight on past, and present pioneers. It has an educational side and it has a performance side. The educational side, which is very, very important and very special to me, lends itself to the local schools in the area, Colville and um, all the schools that surround the Tabernacle have all benefited from the educational side of Classically British. We invite about 300 children they get to interact with the cast. They get to interact with myself. 
They get to interact with the lighting people and the, the people that have made the stage what it is. And also get a chance to get on the stage themselves and get down and boogie. So it's a, it's a whole encompassing and embracing experience and educational experience which lets them hear about the pioneers, people like Alvin Ailey and Arthur Mitchell and all those people from the past to now where we are with people like Francesca Hayward, who's now dancing with the Royal Ballet, Pasha, Pasha, um, sorry, let me get her name right. Pasha, Pasha, oh, Mark, who slipped up. <laughs> I will get her name. Miss it's P. Pa no, it's, it's P. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's okay. Precious Whip. No, Precious Williams, thank you. <laughs> Precious Williams. Precious, Precious Adams. Precious, yeah. Oh, Mark, you're having a bad name day today. Precious Adams. Unforgettable name. Is a, and she's an unforgettable yeah. ballerina. Like, but yeah. I did forget her name, yeah. so please forgive me, Precious. And she's um, dancing with the English National Ballet now. And, of course, we have Ballet Black, who are doing a good job, but we need to push more British dancers. I think that Ballet Black needs to embrace more British ballet trained dancers. I think they've got one in their company, but please don't um, quote me on that, but I think there's one dancer in the, in the company at the moment. Um, but classically British is really about really sort of pushing and throwing a spotlight on what we've got here and what we've been able to train and, and put forward. And I myself love and have a huge passion for classical ballet. So I've always, over the years, made sure that I've platformed uh, a British black girl or a British mixed race girl or a British girl of colour who lends herself beautifully to the classical aesthetic. And I, I've always managed to do that. Um, because one day at my school, a little, a little black girl came up to me and she said, Mr. Mark, oh, Mr. Mark, I don't see no black ballerinas. And I was like, oh my goodness. What should I do? And I just thought, do you know what? I cannot continue running this school unless I have something in the timetable or somewhere along my annual agenda that lends itself to showing young children a black British ballerina. Yeah. So I've really sort of pushed that whole yeah. educational. Yeah, it comes back to the role and, models you're saying. And role yeah. models of black British um trained ball ballerinas yeah. so that these girls can come that wouldn't make, normally be able to afford to go to the opera house or to rock to Sadler's Wells. They can come to the tabernacle yeah. um, and watch these awesome, um, incredible dancers that um, are British, the best of. Yeah. Well, we think you are the best of, really, yeah. on many levels, Mark. So thanks for all the amazing work that you do in the community. Thank you, Maya. And you're making it a better place and opening oh, up can I just pathways. Say one, can I just say one more yeah, last sure. thing? Yeah, sure. The last thing is the trailer, which I saw for the first time for this, is the director of, of my wonderful film, Classically British 2020, is an awesome guy called Frank Gorwin. And he's a Scottish gentleman, and I'm half Scottish. My mother was Scottish. So we've got like a house on fire. He's done the most amazing job of this film, which gets launched next weekend, Friday the 16th of October. It goes, first it's, there's a private view, which a few people, friends, sponsors, trustees, um, and people that have really sort of like, made this happen for me. We do a pre-performance um, embrace, and then after that, it basically goes global. So if there's anybody that wants to support the pre, you can... Um, How do you log on? How do you, you watch it? You, you, you log on by going to www.portobellodance.org.uk. And if you go to Classically British, to the Classically British page, or to the news and events, you'll see an event bright link. I am a technophobe at the best of times, but even I could press that event bright. <laughs> and Bob's your uncle, Fran is your aunt, you can buy a ticket for a tenner. Yeah. Unless you're one of my special guests that are going to come along, hopefully make a little donation as well, at the pre-launch of this dance 
to inspire Black History event. Yay, we're looking forward to that. Can't wait. Thank I'll you, be logging Maya. on. Thank you, Maya. Thanks for coming to be Thank with you. us today. Thank you.